This video is about the seven epochs. So we've already done the seven archons, which are the near planets, and we've also done the um, eons, the seven eons that happen. So if you look at the anthroposophic material that Steiner brought forth, what I find fascinating about these seven epochs is that they are already known and predicted. And given that this is all known, predicted, and mathematical, and can be sketched out with also the seven eras, which you want to look up, um, just look at the different extinctions that have happened, and the seven days of creation. And if you read my blog at galacticshamanastrologers.net, I wrote and kind of paraphrased and edited and adapted something that was written in 2011 about the seven worlds. So seven obviously is a key number. And if you read the idea of the seven worlds, there is this knowledge of the gate of man in which we enter through Orion and we continue to reincarnate again and again in this trickster template, this game here. And then the gate of the gods in which the whole story of the Christ is a metaphor for a star map of consciousness in which you are an eternal being and you leave this game and you stop playing with these eras, there's epochs, there's eons, and there's archons, um, and you just stop playing with this mathematically constructed artificial environment. The speakers who are still calling themselves spiritualists and identifying these seven epochs as evolutionary are simply reading a script straight from what Steiner wrote in Anthroposophy. And I have studied Anthroposophy quite a bit, um, particularly the geometry of the dimensions, but I also really understand very well and considered getting my master's degree in anthroposophy. But when I looked at the books, I realized <laughs> this whole thing of, of even what Steiner is presenting is based on mathematical knowns. Okay, so when you, you can just look it up. So these people who are calling themselves highly spiritual persons, just look up anthroposophy.eu and search the epochs, and you will see that there is a really clear mathematical construction of Earth evolution. And what's interesting to me is these constructs of Earth evolution are very similar to what Jason from Archaics has written, except Jason seems to know that we're in a, sim a simulation, a copy, and within the simulation, certain events are going to happen, including these extinctions, these cataclysms. So for me, if it's all mathematically known that we've had the Polarian, the Hyperborean, the Lemurian, the Atlantean, now we're in allegedly the post-Atlantean where this character Ariman is going to be born. And in fact, Ariman is even more demonic than Lucifer and his fall. Then we're just playing within someone else's game. So we have to understand there is a very popular person who is just repeating everything that Steiner says about these different epochs and making it like we're evolving. Well, the, the, the big news for me is when Dr. Tom Cowan did a video, and I don't know where it was, it was some months ago now, about how impossible it is uh, this alleged evolutionary schema that that has been proposed to us, which Steiner 
has very, very often talked about these evolutionary schemas um, in which we were basically developing our consci consciousness through like rock and mineral and then amphibious and fish and reptilian and all these different like chicken and and things that we were allegedly evolving for, through and then when i heard tom cowan who is an anthroposophic doctor who to me totally replaces anything that steiner came up with really showed that this whole idea of evolution is absolutely impossible. And I cannot repeat what he said, but it was really basic, like over these millions of years, what happened could not have been some kind of natural evolutionary event. And that's why if you watch the children of time and the 13th sign, I am quite sure that what happens to he what happens to us here is not these just like beautiful mathematical calculated growth spurts that we allegedly go through here in the simulation but i actually do believe that definitely i'm in agreement with jason of archaics that we may have created a simulation like a womb environment and a parasite got in not one parasite but many parasites got in and they they have been playing around with us throughout our experience within this simulation within this copy of maybe other galactic civilizations or our home in andromeda and now we are nothing nothing like what was written through these seven epochs as this nice evolution and and tell me if everything is in sevens isn't this whole thing already calculated and known steiner never said anything about this being a simulated reality and yet dr tom cohen says that all of this stuff that was written about our alleged evolution is absolutely impossible and that's because with the introduction of even the Lucifer's fall and in 800 AD, the Assyric destruction, each one of these ends in a chaos period. So if you look at that anthroposophic site, there's an air chaos period, there's an earth chaos period, there's a fire chaos period and the water chaos period. And so that really goes along with what I said about the eons is that we go through these seven different cycles from the spiritist animus to the uh, nihilist and pandemonium. And then we have another cataclysm, total chaos and a collapse. Now, if that is the way that it's working here, because according to Steiner's own map in Anthroposophy, we, we keep having these destruction chaos phases. What does that mean? What does that mean if you're, quote, evolving? That's why it's very important to read my blog about the seven worlds, because this reincarnation loop, that happens again and again and again is really your choice to keep going through these cataclysms, these complete destructions, and then absolute amnesia, and then to be used and harvested again by the many parasites who are now in this system. And I'm gonna talk with my friend John tomorrow morning about the spider mythology and the grandmother spider and spider woman and who is the spider being that allegedly like eats Navajo children if they're bad children. So I just want to warn you that any narrative that has already been given like the anthroposophic Steiner narrative is a, con is a controlled part of the matrix construct in which some lovely person who has fabulous makeup seems to be able to get into the algorithm and tell you about how how humanity is evolving and if you don't know who i'm talking about 
She has really great wallpaper behind her all the time and perfect lipstick. And I'm just really wondering why so many people watch her when she is spewing the same narrative that we've been given over and over and over that we are somehow evolving. <laughs> so that brings me to why I'm seated in front of my Christ mass tree. Do read my blog because it's far too complicated for me to explain right now. But I want you to look at the symbolism of the red and the white, the reindeer, and, you know, the machine elves, and this person, Santa, okay? Do you remember the spelling that happened to us at our childhood about this Santa and his elves that was watching you, that knows whether you're naughty or nice? And you better be good, for goodness sake. To me, that is just like the weird spider woman stuff from the uh, Navajo tradition. Like, you better be good or your bones will be laid out after spider woman comes and eats you, naughty little Navajo boy. To me, this is the same stuff. But we're like in this cycle, which to me... There's no way this is not a simulation or it couldn't already be mathematically known what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next. For me, this whole simulation of the machine elves watching you, knowing whether you're naughty or nice, and then giving you a life review and telling you, you were a bad little boy, you were a bad little girl, you get a piece of coal. <laughs> or you get consumer goods. <laughs> We're going to bring you consumer goods. But what was this red and white stuff originally? Originally, this red and white stuff was the mushroom of consciousness, right? And the mushroom of consciousness was found under what? Conifer trees, okay? It was red and white. And if you feed that mushroom of consciousness to certain reindeers and then drink their urine, you will see for sure the machine elves. And they will be probably bothered that you're there. And then, you know, if, you, if you're there and you haven't left your body, they'll be very bothered because their default program is to determine whether you've been naughty or nice. So to me, the Siberian shamans who used to bring these Amanita mushrooms in their bags we're bringing them for you to realize the machine elves and that they're always judging and predicting whether you have to, quote, reincarnate or not. But if you read my blog, you'll see that the star map of consciousness around the Christ, okay, who was never crucified, there was no Messiah that was nailed up, um, the consciousness of that star map is at this time during the conjunction to Ephusius, the snake handler, you can decide to get out of all these narratives. I don't care if there are seven archons, there are seven epochs, there are seven eras. There were allegedly seven days of creation. There's allegedly seven stars that, that the Christ holds in his hand, which are the Pleiades. So to me, Folks, you can continue to do this around and around and around and around with the other parasites that are in here that I do believe we are byproducts of their experimentation. But the current experiment that is going on, if you read Benjamin Fulford, which every once in a while I will read it, he really clearly identifies that the current mechanism of control that is being placed in us through the air and through the water and through the edit, you know, what we're eating is something that could permanently lock down your consciousness in yet another matrix in which you can never wake up from that dream. You are really just food for the spiders there. So I do want you to consider all of the, what I'm going to call the spelling that has happened, including the Messiah 
uh, be, being nailed to a cross when that had never happened. And that cross actually being the cross between Orion and Ephesus that I wrote about in the blog. And you deciding when you were going to leave the reincarnation loop, waiting for some future golden age era that Steiner has predicted. And who was informing Steiner? Who is informing this person who is also just parroting Steiner? These are narratives that were written because they're part of the control mechanism of trying to get you to stay here and keep being harvested and children being harvested and spider women eating that nice adrenal eyesed B L O O D. Okay. We're in something entirely different than what Steiner or Anthroposophy understood. So stop listening to those parroted, parroted narratives and start creating your own awareness of the game. The game here is to get you to reincarnate again with some idea that there's going to be a rapture or some divine humans are going to be harvested. Here's the game. You already are divine. You don't need to keep going through the horror and now Ariman's birth is kind of like, oh my gosh, folks, you're going to just keep doing this and believing there is something like a present under the tree that is coming for you. All of this is spelling. It's totally fake within the simulation to keep you in the simulation because it needs your energy. That's why from the beginning, I've called this defunding the matrix. So hopefully that is a, another quick, really I'm talking about the seven epochs that are known and the people who are parroting this don't realize that they are repeating narratives or maybe they do because I do think that what I call the secret police here are so secret that they don't know they're, they are the police. <laughs> and they're just spouting these anthroposophic narratives. And yet, if you listen to that brilliant talk by Dr. Tom Cohen, who is an anthroposophic doctor, there's no way that any of this evolution that was written about by Steiner could have happened. It's not even possible. We are really seriously byproducts now of experimentation that happens from various parasitic interdimensional beings who are here. So it's up to you how much you want to just keep listening to these really perfect lipstick messiahs with the perfect wallpaper about the seven epochs. If you want to keep listening to that, do you wonder if you're going to have enough coherence of your soul to actually leave at some point while you keep waiting for some golden age to happen for humanity's sun and moon to reunite or something crazy like that? If this is all actually a simulation, then mathematically we're in some kind of a time capsule, which I also said, you know, when I went to have my winter tires put on, I was listening at the car store to all of these ads that were playing on a TV about bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, and you can get these pharmaceuticals. But you know, what I think is happening is more people are realizing that we are on some kind of a ship. We are in some kind of a simulated reality. And the cataclysms happen occasionally, I think, with the different, um, you know, what I talked about with the seven eons throughout the seven epochs, um, with the different elements of air, earth, fire, water that then cause a cataclysm. I think it happens because those people who know what this is, who know that this is a simulation, get so incredibly powerful and wealthy, like, for instance, 
the billionaires, the multi-billionaires who know that we're in a computer simulation, they will get wealthier. And so there is this default mechanism in the time capsule that is mathematically constructed. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you're a vegetarian. It doesn't matter if you eat goats. It doesn't matter if you've been naughty or nice. That really causes a cataclysm because those beings who know that this is a quantum computer get richer and richer and richer. And the rest of us are just really wondering how we're going to pay the electric bill and the taxes every month. And that's something else I really do want to speak about. Um, and I'm going to do a video tomorrow with John, which is more like free association of, of, of his experiences and mine. But just look at this realm. You're born in debt. You're born needing to pay to be here. And all the while that you're here, something is harvesting your energy. Something is really trying to traumatize you enough to take your adrenalized expression and consume it and eat it. So there is that here. And I would say get rid of all the Steiner anthroposophic stuff and wonder, really wonder, was he not just part of the control mechanism here? that someday the humans are going to evolve and it's all going to be golden and beautiful and better. Um, I don't know, folks, but I would say with Uranus still traveling um, with the North Node in Taurus, flip every script you've ever been told. Stop believing anything that we've been told, anything about what this place is to assure your liberation is, I'm sure, I'm absolutely positive, is the point of this experience. Okay, I'll see you soon in my next video with my friend John.